Topical steroids, commercially named cortisone or corticosteroids, are products industrially synthesized from soybeans and guayans. Since 1940s, cortisone has been used for therapeutic purposes. At the present, the commercialization of cortisone generates an income of more than $2 billion per year only in the US. Cortisone is additionally produced by our own body from the cholesterol metabolism at the adrenal glands and at the keratinocytes, which are structural cells of the skin. In the skin, unlike than in the inner organs, topical steroids like dexamethasone, betamethasone, and cortisone are in fact more potent anti-inflammatory compounds than the cell cortisol, which is also named hydrocortisol. Once topical steroids are applied in the skin, they activate the production of cortisone or cortisol in the keratinocytes, which results in a positive feedback. Once in the skin, topical steroids or cortisone as well as cortisol enters directly to the nucleus of the immune and structural skin cells. In the nucleus of these cells, cortisol can downregulate the expression of pro-inflammatory molecules produced by the immune and structural cells and shut off the pro-allergenic functions of these cells. Effects of topical steroids in the skin structural proteins. One of the reported side effects of topical steroids is that these substances can additionally downregulate the expression of structural proteins of the skin, for example, the filigree. In fact, experiments in rodents demonstrated that counteract these effects with an additional medication results in a significant reduction of topical steroid withdrawal symptoms. In conclusion, cortisone can impair the barrier function of the skin that can be a potential mechanism contributed to our red skin syndrome and needs to be further investigated. Effects of topical steroids in cortisol production. Cortisol production at the adrenal glands is induced by a hormone named ACTH that is produced in the pituitary, which is induced by the CRH, a hormone that is secreted by the hypothalamus. This system is known as hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis or HPA axis. However, the signals required from the pituitary to induce the production of cortisone in the keratinocytes is known, and I mark it here in the figure which an X. Overuse of topical steroids can therefore affect the normal function of the pituitary gland to produce ACTH and likely these X signals delivered to the skin. Other reported side effects of topical steroid disease, for example, continued use of cortisone can induce constitutive depression of the HPA axis, resulting in reduction of systemic cortisol, like had been demonstrated for Timovade, or constitutive overactivation of the HPA axis, resulting in overproduction of systemic cortisol, the so called caution syndrome. Therefore, Cortisone can affect the homeostasis of the HPA axis. Luckily, not all eczema patients have abnormal HPA axis functions. However, whether long-term topical steroid treatment modifies the cutaneous cortisone and cortisol levels by affecting the pituitary skin axis needs to be investigated because low levels of cutaneous cortisol during topical steroid withdrawal are likely contributed to our red skin syndrome symptoms. Effects of topical steroids in skin nerve endings. Recent reports demonstrated that long-term usage of topical steroids induces skin nerve endings hypertrophy and nerve growth factor overproduction that continues even after topical steroid withdrawal. Dr. Rappaport, in the other hand, reports efficacy of neurontin and Lyrica which are medications against neuropathies for the treatment of red skin symptoms. The same doctor reported that nitric oxygen is responsible by the red skin. Other reports in AD mouse models showed that in fact inhibition of nitric oxygen reduced redness and completely suppressed gene. 
One hypothesis says that long-term topical steroids induce neuropathy in skin nerve endings. But this long-term topical steroid treatment will result in nerve endings damage and nerve ending hyperproliferation through the production of NGF. However, the symptoms of this neuropathy won't be seen because at the same time topical steroids inhibit the immune system. However, after topical steroid withdrawal, the damaged hyperactive skin nerve endings trigger the immune system which induces inflammation and produce nitrate oxygen, which induces vessel dilatation and itching. Conclusion: Topical steroid-induced damage of skin nerve endings could explain most of the red skin syndrome symptoms through nitrate oxygen-dependent and independent mechanisms. Effects of topical steroids in skin immunotolerance. Allergic inflammation can be divided in four phases, sensitization, elicitation, tolerization, and busting. Sensitization it is when an individual encounters the allergen for the first time and gets sensitized to it. At this stage, there is no inflammation. Elicitation it is when an individual gets secondarily exposed to the same allergen. It may or not be a mild allergic inflammation at this stage. Tolerization. At the end of the elicitation or even at the sensitization phase, the individual's immune system recognizes the allergen as harmless and becomes tolerant to it. It means that he or she don't get allergic to this specific allergen. And the busting. It occurs when the immune system wrongly recognizes the allergen as a harmful molecule during the tolerization phase. Thus, further allergen encounters result in stronger or busted inflammatory responses. Consequently, these individuals get allergic to this specific allergen. The process of sensitization in health individuals occurs upon initial contact to the allergens. A secondary contact results in an elicitation which may result in a mild inflammatory response. But the tolerization to this allergen depends on a normal elicitation phase. A correct tolerization phase results in non boosted inflammation upon further allergen encounters. However, in individuals with eczema that are treated with topical corticosteroids, the elicitation phase is truncated by the effect of the immunosuppression of the topical steroids. This may affect or impair the correct induction of tolerance, which result in a boosted response upon further contacts to this allergen. In conclusion, topical steroid treatment may interfere with the natural course of inflammation, which results in impaired tolerance. Profound loss of tolerance, therefore, can also be another potential explanation for our red skin syndrome symptoms under topical steroid withdrawal. A summary, long-term topical steroid treatment in eczema patients may conduce to a skin barrier dysfunction, breaks the homeostasis of cutaneous and systemic cortisol, a skin nerve endings neuropathy, and induce loss of skin tolerance and generate immunomisbalance, therefore. In conclusion, all these side effects of topical steroid presented before could individually or in combination be the cause of RSS symptoms. Identify the culprit mechanism will lead to the generation of therapeutic strategies to overcome DSW symptoms in weeks rather than in months or years. Then supporting this project will follow to investigate all these hypotheses. Then please support it.